Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'll tell you something, I was rummaging around my cache uh, just the other day and I found this um, and I'm embarrassed to say that I got this last year and I kind of forgot to review it uh, but I did promise to review it so here it is uh, and the reason why I kind of left it was because this didn't really catch my imagination, catch my interest. Uh, but you know, I'm going to get into this and uh, let you guys see it and you can tell me what you think. So uh, nothing too special. This is of course a spinnaker and uh, this is a standard spin spinnaker packaging here. So just a cardboard box and I'm going to take it out. Uh, inside the box itself, uh, you get your kind of standard manual, standard warranty card, nothing more than that. So I'm going to put that aside and get the watch out of this cushion which it comes in um, and show it to you. So guys, this is the Spinnaker Cahill mid-size automatic. The model number is SP5042 and this one is dash 03 for the color which is really that green dial, green strap with the gold tone casing. So this is what this uh, particular uh, model is. The movement in here is, you can guess it, right? It's really a Seiko NH35. Uh, and I think I'm not going to actually read out the specs to you. I'm just going to put it like maybe here and let you read it and you can pause it if you want. Uh, you're probably sick of me reading out specs to you of the Seiko NH35. I've done that numerous times, so I'm just going to do this today. Um, so uh, this watch... Uh, Really, the retail originally was 245 but I'll, I'll be surprised if they actually managed to sell it for 245 Discount codes let you get it for under 200 So that's probably realistically what people uh, got it for. So guys, I'm going to flip this around to the table and uh, let you take a closer look at the watch. So let's go do that right now. Okay, guys. So let's take a closer look at this watch here. So the case size here is... 38 millimeters across 316 L gold tone steel obviously as you can see uh, the case already when I showed you the watch uh, 14 millimeters is the thickness and it includes uh, that slightly domed glass at the top there 20 millimeter is the lug width uh, with a lug to lug distance uh, despite the small size it's actually a fairly decent lug to lug of 46 millimeters uh, one thing to note uh, as you see this case is that uh, it's got a screwing crown, but there are no guards. So that's a bit atypical of uh, a lot of the modern divers uh, that you may be used to. Um, it's a leather strap watch, as you can see. So it doesn't tip the scales at very much at all. 76 grams it is all it comes across as. Finishing wise, um, look at the lugs. Okay, it's actually got a circular uh, brush pattern across the top, as well as the bottom of the lugs also carries that circular brush pattern. Uh, it's got vertical brushing on the sides and it's also got this bevel on the side there between the lug and the side, between the top and the side surfaces that's actually polished. So that's quite interesting that they've uh, again pushed to do some case craft here. You know, there's, there's something that's gone into it. It's not just stock standard simple uh, case when, when there's something I can appreciate. Right, the display case back just let you look at it there. So, you know, that rotor actually has some patterning to it. So that's the bit of decoration. The actual NH35 inside is absolutely not decorated. Uh, but you got that screw-in display case back with a screw-in etched crown. So just show you that etching there. Right, there is some depth to it. Uh, it's not very deep, but there is some depth to it. So with that crown and case back, they actually rate this watch at 100 meters, which it's a bit surprising actually because they, they've kind of gone for a diver design but if, to qualify as a dive watch you really need to push it to 150 meters that's what's the minimum uh, accepted rating oh, of course you can actually go diving uh, with a watch of 100 meter water rating it's just that it's not officially uh, the minimum depth rating that you, you're supposed to go for so that, that's what this is rated at 100 meters um, now moving on to the dial there all right just let you have a quick look at that closer look if I can there is actually some texture there. It's a bit like a fine sandpaper kind of a rough texture which is really quite interesting I think they've, they've really you know tried to make different dials in their watches every one that I've got uh, so this one's a dark green textured dial it's got that applied uh, some mariner style markers except the, the size is just 
oversized. It is surrounded by uh, gold tone steel and the hands are all in kind of the same gold tone. Uh, now interestingly they're Mercedes style hands but not really because if you look at the hour hand it doesn't actually have the triple uh, divide for the Mercedes there so it's kind of Mercedes style without actually being Mercedes. Uh, the loom they say is super luminova um, they don't actually specify anything more than that so I'm not sure which particular one it is but it is kind of got that green so uh, it could actually be C3 or C1 perhaps, I'm not really sure, but of course I'll put a loom shot for you to appreciate how it works in the dark. Moving on to the bezel then. Okay, just take a look at that. It's actually a painted aluminium insert, that, that, that's what that insert is. It's got that gold tone uh, colour for the markings there and it's really quite simple. It doesn't have the 15 minute divisions, it's just got 15, 30, 45 and then dots for the rest of the five minute marks as well as a triangle uh, for the 12 o'clock position and I'll just let you hear it right 15 clicks there is actually a 90 click unidirectional style dive bezel so they've gone for 90 clicks they have done 90 clicks for some of the other models I'm not really sure uh, why that is because uh, it's a rather odd number but that, that's what they've chosen to implement on this watch uh, and then lastly, on top of that is a domed mineral glass with you know, nice distortion that you can get on the side there. So that's really what it is. Uh, it does have a slight bevel on the edge here. Okay, so there's a slight dome and then a slight bevel step on the very edge there. Okay, so that's the case and the dial there. Uh, moving on to the band, nothing much to say. Really spinnaker treated leather uh, in this dark green in this case. Uh, but this time they do have a bit of a suede finishing, which some watches and some bands do, right? So you see that. So suede style finishing, and it's got a brush gold tone steel buckle with spinnaker logo across the top there. All right, so let's just put this on uh, for the wrist shot, and then we'll talk about the plus and minuses. So there we have it, the spinnaker Cahill mid size 38 millimeter uh, on my 17 centimeter wrist. So remember, that's 46. Uh, millimeters lug to lug distance there which is absolutely fine for my size wrist and probably for most people uh, most men this would be okay i think all right so guys what have i think is the positives about this watch well i think i've alluded to some of this the case craft is actually not bad right the finishing not too much to complain about and that's really one of the hallmarks of spinnacle is that their case finishing is actually okay i mean they're not groundbreaking but you know they've gone for that polished bevel there um, and overall solidity it feels okay um, what else can i say well you know I, I think that dome glass does add some character really you know that distortion that's really pretty cool i like dome glass like that but it is mineral glass so because it's quite proud just beware that may well be prone to scratching with frequent use what don't I like about this? Well, I think the size makes it less de desirable. It, it's, it's a 38 millimeter in this day and age. Uh, I certainly wouldn't choose a dive style watch of this size. It's just really not my choice. Perhaps some people would. Let me know if you would uh, go for this size. Uh, I certainly wouldn't go for it. Um, I think the dial is really out of balance. I mean, those markers are just huge and disproportionate and that's probably the one thing I dislike the most about this watch it just looks cartoony I think in terms of the imbalance uh, that that size markers bring to this dial this this you know 38 millimeter watch with a small dial and then I'll say that the strap is average you know that all of their straps have been rather average nothing groundbreaking uh, for over two hundred dollars I, I kind of expect maybe something a bit better perhaps some of the leather that Seiko puts out would be a bit better uh, than this. I would like to see them take on a bracelet. They have no bracelet watches in terms of metal bracelets that may have saved this uh, model a bit. I don't know, but uh, they haven't as yet taken on the bracelet. That's something I look forward to Spinnaker taking on in the future. So guys, that's uh, my thoughts on the plus and minuses. You know, is this the worst Spinnaker ever? I, I don't know, maybe not, but certainly I would say this is the worst Spinnaker that I have featured on the channel. So guys, let's flip this around and go back uh, to the uh, table shot for the wrap up. So guys, there you have it. That's my review of the Spinnaker Cahill Midsize Automatic. 
Uh, if I appear a bit flat about this, that's because it really doesn't float my boat. Uh, but let me know what you think about this particular piece. Uh, I'll be interested to know if anybody actually uh, bought this at retail. If, if you told me you went ahead and, and bought it at full retail, I'd probably fall over my chair, to be honest. Um, so guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I'll catch you next time.